We gotta break this down into a few videos, dude. We're not talking about the all-stars. In this video, we'll wait a little bit to make that commentary because there are some extra things that I think would be worth talking about. But in this video, we are talking about the Canucks and the Sabres. It just wrapped up a 1 p.m. start time. Honestly, I was kind of complaining a little bit about the time and the fact that we had 16 games on tap today. Like, who decides that? That's crazy, NHL. But... I will say for today's game in particular, there's like a really big snowstorm going on in Buffalo. So to y'all fans who are actually at the game or Buffalo Sabres fans who are in the area, be safe driving home. There are already concerns as to whether or not this game would be maybe pushed back. A few other games in different leagues, sports leagues that is, actually did get their games moved to other dates because of the weather in Buffalo. So obviously my heart's out to y'all who are trying to transit home, trying to get home, and leaving the arena in a snowstorm after watching your team get defeated 1-0 on home ice. The Vancouver Canucks take this one 1-0, and honestly... Was that a hockey game or was that a boxing match, dude? What a weird showcase of events. I'm going to go out there and say that this game, Vancouver versus Buffalo, game six out of seven on the road trip, this, this one right here was the most difficult game of the road trip. Like, sure, they lost to the St. Louis Blues. You could say that one was a hard game, but that was mostly the Canucks shooting themselves in the foot and not getting going. You could say the New Jersey game. Hey, they almost gave up the lead. They had to battle back. They had to tighten it down in the third, but they had so many goals there. Same thing could be said about the Islanders. Same thing could be said about the Rangers and the Penguins. The Canucks offense was flying high. But this game right here, oh boy. Brock Besser gets a goal at the start of the second period. It gets taken off the board because Elias Pettersson brought the puck in while JT Miller was offside, and then Sam Lafferty gets the goal a little bit after on a rebound chance, and that's it! That's the only semblance of offense the Canucks get on the score sheet. 1-0 is the final score here. Thatcher Demko with his league-leading fourth shutout on the year, and all of a sudden, when you watch, like, the tape of this game, Sure, if you look at the highlights, you'll see the saves. You'll say, Thatcher Demko went beast mode. He made so many fantastic stops, especially in the last few minutes there. You'll talk about the Sabres and their fans complaining that you got Kyle Lekpozo out there in the dying seconds of the third. You can talk about the missed opportunities. You can talk about all the pucks that were shot over the net. You could talk about the crossbars. You could talk about the numerous scoring chances that the Sabres had, wherein Thatcher Demko either stood tall or the Sabres just hit the pipe. There were many opportunities for both teams, but at the end of the day, this game will be remembered for its physicality. My gosh, dude. The Buffalo Sabres at one point in this game were down three defensemen, and with all the power plays and extra disciplinary four-on-fours that were called out because guys were roughing, guys were hitting. This was a game with very little pace, I would say. There was so much stopping and going between actual game action because of the physicality that it kind of took me out of the moment a little bit. Like, while watching this game, it was tough to really get into the groove, you know? Because starting things out, it was Philip Peronik who takes out Matthias Samuelson with an elbow to the guy's chin. That one was kind of missed, not gonna lie. Although, I will say, Peronik was trying to shoot the puck. It was kind of just a follow-through. He didn't hit Samuelson. He just kind of clocked Samuelson whilst trying to shoot the puck and Samuelson ended up leaving the game. He was out with something. It looked like it was on his jaw or his chin. He just kind of got caught up high. So they lost out on him for a portion. You had Sam Lafferty get taken out to the head after he scored the goal. Very nice to see there, eh? No call either, so that must have been fine. And then speaking about guys getting hit in the head, JT Miller took out Rasmus Dahlin with a hit that so many people seem to be divided on, where they actually had to review it and they ended up assessing Miller a two-minute minor for elbowing. They were reviewing it for a five-minute major because JT Miller, after chasing the puck into the corner, ends up bumping into Rasmus Dahlin, and you could see that there are two points of contact on the hit. Miller's elbow hits Dahlin in the chest, but Miller's shoulder hits Dahlin in the head, and you can kind of tell there's a little bit of an upwards motion on Miller when he's driving into the hit. But all things considered, in regards to everything below the bicep, the form was where it needed to be. The elbow was near Darlene's chest. It wasn't really a direct, like, you know, chicken wing kind of situation. Miller just kind of got the guy while Darlene was looking down. And, you know, many of the 
fan bases of either teams have been going out there to war on social media now. Sabres fans saying, oh no, Miller hit Darlene high. Look at that. He drove his elbow into Darlene's head. He got elbowed in the head, man. How is that not a penalty? And then you look at it again and it's like, no, dude, he didn't drive his elbow into Darlene's head. His elbow was near Darlene's like crest, the Buffalo Sabres logo on the jersey. So it was kind of tough to see at full speed, but upon further inspection with the replays, you can see there were multiple points of contact with Miller's body and Darlene's head and chest, which is why there was, you know, some contention there, especially since Darlene is Darlene. But after that play, he had the other first overall pick go out there and just start wailing on JT Miller in probably the weirdest way possible, like, Owen Power, good on you for stepping in and trying to defend the best player on your team and Darlene, but it very well is clear that Owen Power does not know how to do that properly. Like, he's got to take some lessons from some of these other guys. How to properly drop the gloves and contest a situation where an opposing player just took a shot at your guy. Like, don't just grab him and start wailing on him, man. He got a penalty for that. He was roughing, and JT Miller got a penalty for elbowing somehow, because apparently elbowing a guy in the crest of his jersey is illegal. But then you had JT Miller answer the bell a little bit later. He fought Eric Johnson, who is still in the National Hockey League. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Eric Johnson is indeed still here. Really good Tilly. Like, honestly, JT Miller, he doesn't fight, like, as often as he has in the past, but he was good, and he took the guy out. They ended up landing harshly onto the ice, too. Kind of concerned about the way Johnson landed, but he got up and he was fine, so it seemed like everything was okay. But as the game continued, you saw more physicality amped up towards guys like Quinn Hughes. Elias Pedersen was getting the brunt end of a few hits, too. This was a physical, physical game, and intertwined within all of that was Thatcher Demko making save after save after save and eventually getting the shutout with 25 saves on the night. Meanwhile, Uko Pekalukkanen had 22 saves on 23 shots, so he had a 9.57 save percentage too. This game, you could say, was a goaltending battle, but honestly, if you watched it, most of the attention was put towards that physicality. Both of these teams just really didn't like each other, especially towards the end there. And you could really feel the pressure and intensity amping up. Like, sure, if you're a Buffalo Sabres fan, you're probably disappointed to be driving home in this snowstorm after watching your team lose 1-0, but from an entertainment standpoint, that was a fun game. Like, for all of us out here who are not, like, on the ice, just seeing these guys go barbarian mode on each other, that's kind of fun. And at the end of the day, it results in a Vancouver Canucks win, their fifth win on this road trip, fifth straight, mind you. This is a pretty good run. And they'll end things off by playing off against the Columbus Blue Jackets, wherein, I mean, look, CBJ hasn't been great either. Although I did say that heading into this game against Buffalo, the Canucks have this weird pattern where they start to play down to their opponent's level. Buffalo hasn't been great this season, but the Canucks, after playing off great games against New Jersey, New York, and New York, it's going to be fun to see how they respond to playing against a team that's actually, like, really, really worse than they are. And lo and behold, the Buffalo Sabres came out to play. Their game plan was just go after Pedersen and Hughes, no questions asked, and they did that. I will say as well, for some of these Buffalo opportunities, they were trying to get a bit too fancy and precise with their shooting. Like, some of the shots that they had, if they had just hit the net, you know, just hit the net. Hit the net, make the goalie make the save, like, just allow things to go your way. If they just done that and hit like two fewer posts, then this is an entirely different hockey game. And of course, if the Vancouver Canucks just did not go offside when Brock Besser scored, then hey, Besser would have been even closer to that 30 goal marker. But at the end of the day, it's just Sam Lafferty from Nikita Zadorov. That's the only goal of the game. one nothing is your final score in Buffalo. Hopefully the Canucks are able to travel properly because there is that snowstorm going on. I did see somewhere they were talking about like some sort of a travel ban starting. I'm not too sure what's going on in the situation over there, so if anybody is, like, in the area, then let me know what's happening. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Vancouver Canucks defeating the Buffalo Sabres in this wildly physical game. JT Miller, Rasmus Dahlin, Philip Pronick on Matthias Samuelson, Owen Power getting involved there too, Quinn Hughes getting the brunt end. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99. And... Bye.